Hey everyone, Coach Sullivan here again with MGS Coaching Football. First, to those of you who have subscribed, thank you. And to those of you who haven't, I hope you do. I just finished my 38th year coaching football and I was a defensive coordinator, but over the years I've also been an offensive coordinator, a special teams coordinator, and I've been a head coach, and all of these are at both the collegiate and high school levels. So today in this presentation, what I want to talk to you about is our 3-4 versus what we call a mob, okay? Motion over into the backfield, motion over into the backfield. And there's a reason we do that. Again, you got to come up with a buzz term, okay? We don't use mob for anything else, all right? And what this involves is a structure change. And this is so important, I've written it twice in the title. Okay, in the playlist that shows up in the explanation part, but it's also in the title. Again, it's mentioned twice because of the significance of what's meant by structure change. That's a big part of this presentation. Okay, and so this is 10 and 11 personnel, so it's all one back, no tight end 10, one tight end 11. Okay, and it's specifically it's broken down to we have two by two adjustment rules, and we have three by one adjustment rules, okay? There's similarity in both adjustments, and then there's one primary difference, okay? So our one back two by two adjustment rules, first and foremost, there's no rope, okay? No rope. The DBs move up because of the structure change. Again, that's a big focus here today. There's a possible force change. So that's a big part of this as well. Our one back three by one, there is a rope. And why there's a need for a rope in three by one versus two by two, over here, all the three by one scenarios, there's a commonality. You'll see why. Okay. And then in specifically in a case, as you'll see, where there is number threes detached, so it's a three by one with three wide receivers. The outside linebacker over number three is the one who'll rope back to safety. Okay, and then there is an unless factor in there, so that's you'll be the one to rope back to safety unless, and I saved that on purpose. That's another big coaching point. One case in particular, that's the reason for the unless as you'll see okay so without further ado I'll, let me just i'll specify i'm not getting into the the alignment rules i'm not getting into techniques and who's got gap responsibilities no no i'm simply going to get into how we adjust when we get a mob motion okay motion over into backfield motion over into backfield all right so I'm going to stay here on the left, go top, middle, bottom. Once we cover two by two, then I'll move over to three by one again, top, middle, bottom. Okay? And everything that I do for the defense will be in red. For the offense, so we got to get that mob motion first, that'll be done in blue. All right? So first of all, we have it's all middle of the field. The two by two diagrams are all middle of the field. The three by one diagrams, all middle of the field. Okay, so again, let's try and just get over all the, the variables that could occur. Middle of the field, we're just trying to teach how we adjust our base rules to adjust to a mob motion. All right? So the two by twos we have are the, are the ones that we see. We have 10 gun Detroit. Two by two, we have 10 Dallas. Two by two, with there's the, all the variations. Again, I'm not bringing those in because, honestly, the adjustment doesn't change. All right? So the first one here, and this will also be commonality, and this is pistol aside. Okay? So pistol is a whole different animal by itself. So we won't cover pistol in this presentation. Another presentation. So if you have questions on pistol, you can email me at coachmjsullivan@gmail.com. But I'm purposely not talking about pistol. Okay. 
I'm talking about offset halfbacks. Okay, offset halfbacks. And so tip 99.9, I don't, in fact, I can't even remember a time where this didn't happen. And the this is, right, first of all, always make sure your kids know which receiver is the most eligible. eligible. In one back, there are only two. You may get up seven guys in the line. There are only two. And we're not talking about empty here either. Okay, so let's eliminate all those. One back. Two eligible receivers to go in this motion. But honestly, help your kids info dump. The only potential for mob motion is coming from the uh, eligible receiver opposite the offset halfback. Okay? So this is east, which means right. So honestly, the mob is only going to come from our left. And so the mob motion, let's talk about why we call it mob, motion over into backfield. Speed of motion, for starters and timing, right? He takes a course, and the straight line is always going to be the course in front of the quarterback. So there's the chance for a jet read, just a jet sweep, right? Or he takes a course behind the quarterback. Maybe he's going to be the pitch back in an option. They're going to do a read look here, and then there's a triple option when he, now you know, the receiver's the pitch back. So he's over or in front of, okay, or behind. That's why we just say mob. He's motioning over and into the backfield. Okay? You with me on this, I hope? So, here it is, the adjustment, right? Remember, no rope, two by two, right? We have an alley defender near the line of scrimmage on both sides here. The A technique, that's in the alley. Alley, 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 two by two. There's kind of the, not kind of, there's the key. Because we have alley defenders near the line of scrimmage, we do not need to rope. All right? So now this happens. We still, and I'm only going to say this this one time, it always starts with we got a rabbit. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Mob motion is a rabbit call just like Mac motion. Same thing. Okay? Remember, rabbit equals wide receiver motion. Today, this motion is mob, over and into the backfield, right? Okay, so we started off, two's detached, so it's check orbit. Now, here it is, rabbit, right? We see the course, and you got to work the daylights out with your kids. He's in front. It's much deeper. You can see the angle, especially when it's behind. So he's going to stop here on the edge. Now it goes, see, here's your possible force change. Now it's back to check sky. You checked orbit because it's always sky unless two's detached. Now we got to check back to sky because two's no longer detached, see? And you still got orbit over here. You still got your alley defender over here. This is why we don't need rope. So now watch how it's consistent. Now we got again, it's 11. Now we're in 11 personnel, right? One back, one tight end. Tight ends left, 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 rip. <clears throat> Check orbit here, sky over here. What's meant by two? This is a west. Yes, it is a west, but we tag it as two in our huddle columns because that means the halfback is offset to the tight end. Okay, two the tight end. So, again, same deal, right? Only two of the receivers are motion eligible, and the only one who's going to go in mob motion is the one opposite. So there he is. So as you, as you teach it to your kids, first, you know, who's motion? Oh, okay, well, who can? which of the two is most likely to do the mob motion? They should be able to point that out one. Why? Because he's opposite the back. Ask the questions. Make them tell you why. 
because then that means they understand it and they are likely to execute it without having to think, right? Play fast here, you play fast with your feet. So again, starts with the rabbit call. He's either in front or he's behind, right? So same situation here. Now two's not detached, so it's check sky, check sky, check sky, check sky. Okay? Hopefully you got this, right? <clears throat> Gun Dallas away. So now again, technically, yes, this is east. Our kids would be screaming east. But again, the, the vernacular for the uh, formation tagging and huddle, away means away from the tight end. So now, okay, who's eligible? Okay, one and two. Which ones the could, ex could execute the mob motion? One coach, you say beautiful. Rabbit. And there it is again, right? In front of the quarterback or behind? In front. So in, in front, it's usually the jet sweep or jet read. Again, teach this to your kids so they can eliminate. He's behind. It's most likely pitch back for some form of zone read with now an immediate pitch. Now it's like the old-fashioned triple option play out of the gun. Okay? So now, right, it's Sky. He's going to move in. He's going to move up. And now it'll check. Cloud, and here's the why I called it possible, checked cloud because if you're comfortable with your corner being the run support defender against, remember, that's single width now. The tight end is the end of the formation. It just became single width. Then it checks cloud. The other way you can adjust to this, hence the possible, and even if it's one scenario, that's why it's referred to as possible. The other thing you can do when this happens is so it stays sky no force change is that hammer if you're going to do a hammer check versus single width then that's how you're going to adjust and they mob motion so keep it the same remember hammer is safety and corner switch so you have a bigger body and run support on that single width and that for that reason we phrase it as possible force change because sky would stay sky in a hammer. You see what I mean? Okay, so in all of these scenarios, the DBs moved up. So the corners are at one by four. Okay, the safeties are at two by eight. In this case, it would be one by eight. Okay? Because I will not be signaling 10 to them. The only other time they'd be deeper is I signal 10 versus a two-back two back set. Okay? When they mob to a two-back, and I'm going to get to the structure change right now because that's what we have, <clears throat> they're going to be at eight. Okay? That's our rule. Two by eight, unless I can do this, and in mob, I will not do that. Okay, that's the automatic. So the structure change. I'm going to spend a fair amount of time right now on the structure change before I get to three by one. Structure. <clears throat> this will give you a little bit of a back, my construction background. Right, when you build a house and you got, let's just take a standard 32 by 24 foundation, you know, kind of a smaller house. The first floor is a box, matches the foundation. It's the second floor and then the roof that determines what type of structure it is, meaning what style of house. Okay, so it's the top that determines what type of house it is, whether it's a colonial. So you got full eight-foot uh, ceilings on the second floor. It's a cape. So in the front, you have half wall because of the steepness of the slope in the front of the roof. A gambrel, right? All the different types of homes that there are. Salt box from Nantucket, if you're not familiar with that, all right? So it's the roof line on the second floor, on top of the second floor, that can, that determines whether or not 
It's a colonial, it's a cape, it's a uh, Nantucket salt box, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we do the same thing. It's the backfield is the top of the offensive formation. That's changed the structure, okay? So when it's one back, the structure is east, or it's, you know, it's gun east, or it's gun west, or it's back to gun east. That's the structure. The structure changes when you have mob motion. Remember, motion over and into backfield. So it just went from one back to two back. That's a massive structure change. That's why the corners move up. The safeties move up. Okay? Because in front... It would be kind of an awkward, like the old-fashioned wing T, fullback, halfback, offset, right? Mob goes behind. Now it's an offset eye out of the gun. But either way, it's two back. It's no, it's nothing like the one back set. See, that's the structure change. So, like a house, the roof line. It's this style of house. Now you change the roof. It's a different style of house. In football, you had. One back, offset east, that's the structure. Now all of a sudden you got another receiver back there. There are two of them. That's a whole different structure. Okay? And so the reason <clears throat> in two by two, when the structure changes due to the mob, we do not need to rope is because we have somebody in what's called the alleyway, outside the defensive end, in between that and the corner on both sides of the formation. As I said, the outside linebacker, and you have safety here, right? Safety has the force. That's He's in the alley. We have a guy in the alley here, orbit. We have a guys in the alley here, two of them. We have guys in the alley here. We have a guy in the alley here. It's balanced. So again, we have the alley protected on both sides without having to rope right we don't have to replace somebody because somebody's missing when we get the three by one that's different okay so again big coaching point here is that structure okay i mean we all understand the one back's different than two and i don't mean to imply otherwise but you got to understand how that changes with something like mob motion, because the wide receiver who's eligible to do it, and most likely the guy opposite the offset back, is the one who changed the structure to two back set. Okay, and, and all the different plays that can come out of it now. All righty, so now we're going to take that same concept of the structure change, the same concept of now why we don't have a guy in that alleyway and we got to replace the rope replace everybody now to compensate to get us to being balanced on both sides okay i'm getting all excited because this is phenomenal stuff i love this stuff one of the reasons i'm such a big fanatic fan is well a couple of reasons one my dad's a hall of fame football coach in his own right i was been blessed to play for Hall of Fame high school coach, one of the best defensive coaches in the history of football, Jim Reed at UMass Amherst. I mean, I've been very, very blessed that way. And the reason I love it on top of those things is it's a thinking man's game. And now it's a thinking man and woman's game. Fantastic, right? We've got more and more women getting into coaching as well. So it makes you think, which is why I really love it. Okay, so therefore, a big part of our thinking is Take the thinking out of it for your players. If they're thinking, they're stinking. That's what we like to say. If you're thinking, you're stinking. So that's where we come in. Let's think how we can simplify this so our kids can just react full speed without having to think about it. Okay? All right, so I'm going to keep it the same in that the offense will be doing its stuff in blue. And we'll be doing ours in red. So let me start off over here. Up top, remember, it's all three by one on the right. It's all middle of the field, and I'm not going to belabor those points. 
I want to focus right now on why we're going to have to rope, the alley, right? So here, it's gone Toledo away. First, yes, it would be east. We'd be calling east. But in Honolulu, it would be tagged away because now what's meant by in 10, the halfback is offset away from the three receivers. And so <clears throat> as you look at it, yeah, it's sky, but in order for – sky to occur we do not have any defender near the line of scrimmage in that alleyway on the snap the safety screws down well when they go and it could be number two two or three they're the two motion eligible guys but usually it's three when the mob comes and we got that rabbit call so he's in front or behind the quarterback okay well first of all right structure change now you got two back set for us in our base, we would have an alley defender near the line of scrimmage there. He's, he's not there now because we go automatic overhang, right? There it is, three by one, base rules, auto overhang. Which means both outside linebackers are on the same side, okay? So because of that, that's why we have to rope. And you'll see the consistency in that as we go through this. Okay? Because of automatic overhang, we don't have our um, near the line of scrimmage alley defender like we do here. See, both outside linebackers are on either side, which allows us to comfortably play sky support. So two by two, they're on either side. Three by one, they're on both sides. And there it is. Okay, that's the reason. That's why we need to rope. And then the consistency, the DBs move up. Two backs, two back. Corners at four, safeties at eight. Boom, done. And the unless, when I get to this, the outside linebacker, we're going to get to it now. Over three is the one that's going to rope back. So hopefully, first and foremost, we understand now, right? Three by one, we're an overhang, base rules, which means we have to rope. That's the reason. Two by two, they're on either side. So now we get this. We get rabbit first, mob, rope, rope, rope. They'd rope anyway if it was Mac motion all the way across. See, there's the other simplicity. They're going to rope versus both types of motion, Mac and mob. This one's mob, which is the structure change. So now he comes down. He comes over. It's still sky, right? No, no change. Here it is. The rover, when it's Liz, so Toledo left. The rover's over number three. You have to see another presentation. He's the one that's going to rope back to the safety. It checked orbit. It stays check orbit. But now we've got an outside linebacker, the whip. These guys are interchangeable, screws down. He's now the outside linebacker. Okay, we have it taken care of. So, again, the overhang necessitates the rope. Over here, I'm sorry, I'm not to go too fast. 11 Gun, Texas. The away is from the tight end, consistent. Like a, you know, the Dallas, same 11 personnel. We'd be saying east. It could be one or two, but we'll say it's one, two. He's either in front or he's behind. Again, this would necessitate rabbit, rabbit, rope, rope, rope. So now he comes down. He's the alley outside linebacker on the line of scrimmage. He comes over. Okay. Dime goes back, and there it is. Move up. He moves back a little bit only because he's an outside press, which is an automatic three-by-one adjustment, okay, but he stays at four. It's going to be the same thing here. Stay at four. Move up. You're going to be at eight, right? Consistency. Move up. So we're good so far. So three detached here, outside linebacker. Here comes the unless. Okay. And it's, it's easy to, to remember, I'm not a huge unless guy, unless it's specific scenarios. And it's very easy for kids to go, yeah, it's, yeah you do this because, right, two is attached. No brainer, right? It's always sky. 
Well, here it's going to be the outside linebacker on number three, and the unless is specific to one formation, Topeka. Right? If you've seen my other parts of the base fronts on whiteboard playlist, this is the unique way to the unique formation Topeka. They crank the formation. We crank the coverage. So here's the unless. Again, again, we'd be screaming east. It's two because the halfback's offset to the tight end, just like in the Gondalas two, right? So now, again, it could be two or three, and it doesn't matter which one. We'll say for now, again, it's three. He's in front. He's behind, right? Screaming rabbit. Here's the unless. Who's the guy more comfortable being the safety? The free. So this one here, he's going to rock up. It's not a change because it's check cloud, so it stays cloud. Single width. Rope over. Rope back. Because it went from a one back offset to a two back. Twin, right? Two guy backs in the backfield. Twins, single width tight end. This one here went from one, one back three by one to now it's a two back pro. This went from a one back three by one. Now it's a two back twin open, right? Major, major structure change. And I apologize. I didn't do the red down here, but I'll do it now. Sorry about that. My bad. Okay. So a big deal, not a big difference, but a difference in the gun Dallas, you have the chance to do a hammer alternative. Because of the overhang, it has to remain cloud over here, so you just live with it. If this is a boundary who's not great against the run, you just add tag something that week to help protect him, but you're not going to be able to hammer. There's no way the whip's getting over there. No way. Okay? So to answer that question. So I hope this was really helpful. Mob. Motion over or into the backfield. That's what it stands for, the acronym. We just say mob. And the kids get it. Okay? The angle. He's in front of the quarterback. We're thinking jet sweep, jet read. Right? He's behind the quarterback. We're thinking some type of zone read, triple option. Now you got a pitch or a fake, and now you got a dump off. Right? But either way, you just eliminated a whole bunch of things, and you narrowed it down. All right, which is the purpose, to narrow it down so your kids can play faster. All right? I hope this was helpful. Again, thank you to those who have subscribed already and to those who haven't. I hope you do. To all of you, please reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com because I would just love to talk football with you.